Night to the Fan 1051 FM Worldwide on the free Odyssey app will take you up to noon. AWOD Radio takes over. And what are the odds? He joins us right now. AWOD joins us from AWOD Radio to talk all things commanders. Uh, I want to cut right to the chase here. It's it's the commanders and it's the Bengals. Do they have a chance to win, Adam? Look, it's prime time. It's Monday Night Football, and usually this team does not play good in prime time. But there's a new coach in town. What did he say? Anywhere, anybody, anytime. Is We've got to fight. And is so it. I think we have a chance with this new coaching staff here. But really, it comes down to the legs of Jaden Daniels. And I've said this all week long. I know people disagree with me, but I feel like he gives this team a chance to compete with anybody in the NFL because of his ability to move the chains every third down with his legs. He's going to make mistakes. He hasn't had a turnover yet. He's been very close with a couple fumbles that just weren't recovered. But I think he could make a mistake or two this coming Monday night. But I think he gives you a chance to win because of the explosive plays. Yeah, I don't think they have a chance to win. I don't think it has anything to do with Jaden Daniels. I think he could take a real step forward this week. Think about that Tampa Bay game, right, where he just couldn't quite finish. And then I would say even the Giants game last week just couldn't quite finish. You know, he's getting there, though. Like, I I didn't come away from those games thinking, here's a guy who's not going to be able to finish. I I came away from those games thinking, here's a guy who, when he learns to finish, is going to be dangerous. And you got the extra work day this week, all that stuff. He's got the opportunity to finish this week, which I think will be exciting. This, to me, is all about the secondary. Uh, Jamar Chase, Joe Burrow, uh, it just feels like they're going to be able to pick the number of points they want to score. So for you, this is like the Bucks situation where, hey, we're excited for this season, yeah. first test on the road. Oh, but it's against a team that was in the playoff last year. Bengals a little different, but if they're healthy, we know how good they can be. Super Bowl aspiration. So in your mind, this is, hey, since this is in Cincinnati, Cincinnati, they're probably going to get their first win of the season. Extra rest, lost to the Patriots. It sure feel like all these intangible things are kind of piling up against them. Now, because they lost to the Patriots, you have to say they, they could lose to anybody. It sure feels, though, like this is not going to be the kind of situation where they overlook it, right? Home game, Monday night football. Chase finally feels that he bought insurance, whatever that is. I don't <laughs> know if he called Flo or Travis Kelsey or whoever he bought his insurance from. He He's he's insured now against not making his money next year. Feels like he's more right financially. I I think that's going to be the sort of thing, right? He's right now. Now he's taking care of his business. He's ready to have his breakout game. And uh, when he watches this tape, when he sees what this secondary looks like, he's going to be licking his chops. I think you're right about that. And certainly the secondary is a weakness. And whether it's Emmanuel Forbes, who's now out, Michael Davis, who got burnt, you know, they're going to backups. They're going to backups of the backups, right? Trying to see anything that can work, even if Benjamin St. Juice has a little bit of success. Here's my take, though, is that, You saw how the Patriots stopped the Bengals and forced them to kick field goals, just like the Washington Commanders were forced to kick field goals against the Giants. If you do not convert in the red zone, you give the opponent a chance. I think that's how Washington will have a chance here because I believe we will drive down the field. If we can start converting in the red zone, all of a sudden you give Washington defense an early lead to play with, then they bend but don't break, and all of a sudden Cincinnati might have 400 yards on the ground or through the air uh, com- combined throughout the game, but only maybe 19 points scored because we're holding them to field goals. I'd love to see a takeaway too. If you're adding in what that formula looks like to win, it probably involves getting a takeaway and not, not to dunk on the secondary every time I talk in this show, but the secondary is not going to be produce that takeaway, right? It's very unlikely th- that an interception is going to be the takeaway. So it comes down to your guys up front. Now would be a great opportunity for Deron Payne. Who's had some disruptive plays. has had some success pushing the pocket to make an impact play, make a turnover, strip the quarterback, strip a running back for Jonathan Allen to elevate his game from probably not good enough to good enough to help everybody else around him make a play. I think those are going to be key moments. Can that interior get enough push to let Cleveland Farrell, to let Dorrance Armstrong do their job and create the game-changing plays. I, I totally agree. Washington does not have a chance to win this game unless Deron Payne and Jonathan Allen step up to the level we expect them to play, to play to the level of their contracts, and then Cleveland Farrell, guys like Dorrance Armstrong as well, have to get after the quarterback. I'm looking at Frankie Louvu. I feel like he's been darn close to picking up a sack, a couple tackles for losses. He's flied around the field. Maybe Monday night's his chance to step up. But let's go back to the offensive side of the ball here. And another way to win the game is to control the time of possession. They did that against the Giants. Can they do that against the Bengals front seven? I love the running back combination right now, B-Rob and Eckler. And I I certainly think I'll take B-Rob against any defensive line in the league to gain four yards, to gain five yards. That's how you do that. You, you, You turn first and 10 into second and five. 
whole playbook's open. You can do whatever you want, right? Your coach is talking. You don't want to get behind the sticks. What that means is second and five, second and four, because you can take a shot then and still have a manageable third down situation. B-Rob's been giving you that so far. He's been very impressive, I must say, so far in terms of, you know, on first down, pushing that pile, doing the physical runs, and then obviously broke a couple last week, which was really fun. Uh, and I think the running game, just while Jaden Daniels settles in, the running game is going to be super important. And if the running game is successful, they will have a play-action opportunity. What is holding Jaden back right now from hitting that deep shot, hitting the the deep ball to Terry McLaurin there down the sidelines? What's holding him back? You, so you got a few things. One is the confidence, because we've talked about this before. Terry's not a separation receiver, right? you got to have the confidence. You can throw it into a contest tested window and Terry's going to be the one coming down with it. Now we both know because we've watched him forever. He is, he is the guy who's capable of doing that. Jane's going to have to learn that. Number two is just the touch and the feel of where is he going to be? When's he going to be there? There were a couple plays in these first couple weeks where he, he, looking back, he could have had big plays to Terry. Didn't pull the trigger at the right time. Didn't, didn't, you know, have the window, whatever it is. I think that'll be a real focus for Cliff Kingsbury this week. Now, the other thing, I'm going to throw on this pile is these guys basically go straight from there to Arizona. Well, they do literally go straight from there to Phoenix short turnaround. If if this is an unwinnable game, which I see it as, I think the Cardinals game is still a winnable game. Even with Kyler Murray's success, you know how much you're coaching him for that game too this week. That adds an extra wrinkle. You're not going to have the amount of prep time you want on the road next week, getting ready for a short turn around West Coast game. Surprising to me that you think the Cardinals is a more winnable game with how good their offense has yeah. looked compared to the Bengals, who are 1-0-2 and, oh and two going into this game here. It's I think you're going with the history rather than I'm, what's going vibes. on right now. I'm, I'm picking on vibes, Adam. I, that's... You know, picking off of math and statistics and studying <laughs> hasn't worked for me, so I'm a vibes picker now. The vibes say Cincinnati's going to get right. They can't go to 0-3. They're going to find a way to win this My game. vibe on Jaden Daniels is that he's really developing some timing with Terry McLaurin. He hit him on the out route. He had the one where he definitely tried to hit him on the inside cut, and he almost got Terry's head blown off, right? The timing wasn't quite, quite, quite there yet, right? But he's working towards it. He's got some timing with Zach Ertz we've seen over the middle. I think if the timing develops throughout this week of practice, like you said, they get an extra day to prepare for the Bengals. He could hit those deep shots, and if they get enough explosive plays, they're going to have a chance to win this game. It's going to take a defensive turnover. It's going to take the defensive line being awesome, and then B. Robin Eckler doing what they did last week. Always love getting your take. I'll see you Tuesday for a little wrap-up. Absolutely. I hope it's a victory Tuesday on the fans.